and welcome to another Married to Reselling video. I'm Faye. I'm Simon. And together we are resellers selling mostly on eBay and Amazon. In today's video, we've got the usual sales from right here in the barn, but Faye's got to pop out and I wanted to put a video out. And what I wanted to talk about was sales and coupons, which might not sound too interesting, but I think I'm going to show you something that maybe you've wondered how to do this. How can I maximize the use of sales and coupons? And I've been thinking about it and I've found a strategy and it seems to be working really really well so stay tuned for the end of the video for more about that before we pick i forgot to film yesterday picking we had a bit of a mare didn't we um with stuff going on so just to let you know we sold a set of six salisbury bone china mugs with like a fruity autumnal pattern on them a bit a bit horrible uh they cost 25p for the six and sold for 11.99 and they took 10 months to sell they were from auction it took about 10 months to find as well didn't they well you i, I found them I straight away i couldn't find them and in fact just found them straight away yeah uh, we also sold a rollable pen 22p uh sold for two pound fifty plus post had those a year was that the last no no 12 more wasn't it? okay we also sold a vintage arts and crafts chamber stick candle holder that cost 28p that sold for 10 pound plus post within a month and then we sold a vintage basil ead framed bird prints four of them from the 1960s they were 50p each so two pounds and they sold for 22 pound 49 to a repeat buyer who it turns out has purchased three lots of art from us now so that's good mm. uh, but on with today we have an announcement we have sold something on etsy oh yeah my oh, god. god right it's art 14. it's the aberdeen marishal college i don't know if i said that right limited edition watercolor 546 out of 850 and this cost £1.44. It sold for £29.99 on Etsy, but we dropped the price to £16.87 on eBay. Mm. But it's on Etsy. Yeah, within a month. So that's really good. That was from uh, a job lot of art that we've got. Give me, it's enough. It's enough. Good boy. <laughs> now Luna started. Okay, Crate 17. Yeah. Uh, vintage Queen's Rosina China Company February Violet Special Flowers Teacups. So two teacups uh, with violets on, which are purple. And they cost £2.42 from auction, so for £7.87 plus post within nine months. Didn't buy the lot for those cups, hence the high unit price. Next, we have Crate 7. Glass tea, coffee, sugar jar canisters with bamboo stand and lids. I mean business if you're getting the whole crate out. Yeah, it's Doing. 25 degrees in here and it's not even lunch time that set cost 28p and sold for 14 pounds within a month they'll be good to pack just like that just wrap them okay yeah because the glasses aren't touching yeah blue crate yeah a glass heart sun catcher pearlescent white there we go that cost 35p from auction 11 months ago and sold for seven pounds crate 12. i haven't got my glasses on so we might get the 5 and 15 thing mixed up again like the other day yeah a vintage spade christmas plate from 1971 it's an angel singing on on a white plate with gold bits there it is yeah that cost one pound 14 and that sold for £8.47 and that's been listed for six months and that was from auction. We've got a sale on, haven't we? We do. Trying to clear out some random old stuff. Mm. Here's another old one. This is in crate 18. It's a vintage ceramic lunch plate. In fact, it's two, two vintage ceramic lunch plates. They're rectangles, quite chunky. What's funny about this was that they've been reduced to 3 99 and someone sent an offer yesterday for £4, so I accepted it. Um, so yeah, they sold four pound plus post. They have been listed for about ten months. They cost fifty p from or fifty two p from auction. I didn't even know you could send an offer for more than something was available for. Oh, oh actually, no. Yeah, you do hear about that, don't you, with the scammers doing it and then saying contact me on WhatsApp or whatever. Crate eleven. Yeah. Vintage Madrolica fern bamboo bowl from the eighteen hundreds, brown and green with double handles. Look like a lettuce. No, a fern. 
Do you, is that what you thought looked like a lettuce? Yeah. That's a mouldy lettuce, isn't it? That has lasted longer than Liz Pruff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that cost 61p. That sold for £10. I think it possibly was supposed to have a lid. Um, and that was from auction and sold within three months. Then we've got another old one and it hasn't no. got a skew. What does that say about downloading that report? What is it's it? a cell similar, so I reckon you've accidentally removed it. Wouldn't it's happen. a votive candle and tea light pair collection, crystals at arcs, long shawm. Is it glass? Yeah. Okay, that narrows it down then. So it's two. Two, they look like drinking sort of um, tumblers, but they're for candles and they've got a gold sticker on, like a small gold sticker the size of like a 5p on each one. Yeah. Or is it them? No. Yeah. yeah, it's not in here. I'll um, I'll find them. But okay, then I'll we've got them. a shelf. So I better move out the way. Right, we have some vintage Arca Rock mugs. Six of them, smoky brown. These sold. These sold for a bit less than I was happy with. I got they, sold off. Um, they cost five pound a month ago and sold for sixteen pound eighty seven. Uh, they were from a charity shop and they came with this message hi my arca rock mug or arc as it says on the base just got knocked tonight and unfortunately now has a slight crack in it i've used it for what seems like forever and a day and i already miss it your mugs are pretty close to it and are the best price i could find so i've taken a gamble on them i believe there are tea and coffee mugs with very slightly different dimensions and thicknesses and hope that yours are an exact match fingers crossed mine is half a centimeter taller wider and are quite thin thanks barry well, Barry, crossed. if you're saying that they're different, then they're not going to be an exact match, are they? No. I mean, he says he's taking a gamble. Let's hope he's not, he doesn't mean, because let's hope it's not us that's taking a gamble by yeah. <laughs> sending them and getting a return. I think he sounds like he's not going to return them if they're wrong, but who knows. Yeah, so I got in trouble for this because I think they started at 29 99 and then we reduced them by 15%, no, 20% or something to like 22 49 And then they ended up in the sale because they hadn't had a price change for over two weeks, which meant then they got a 25% off. Now, had it been a low cost price, it wouldn't really have mattered better because they cost five pounds, but it was collateral damage, unfortunately, of me putting the sale on. You know, a broad brush catches the worm. That's the odd phrase, isn't it? The early worm misses the bird. <laughs> what I always say. Found them. Turns out they were in their original boxes. They were so they were in the random tub, uh, which means we would have found them a lot quicker if we'd known they were in the boxes, but they weren't. The main image didn't show the box. Um, so they cost five pounds and sold for seven pound 87. Sad times, but had them a long time. They were from auction, we've had them nearly a year and they are going GSP to Australia. And then we've got a pet scoop that sold on the other site. Hey names. Can you believe it still stinks of lavender in it, even though the lavender thing's been gone for some time. These came in a bulk purchase ages ago and they were really grotty. They should have been new, but they were really dirty and tarnished. The packaging was all broken. Um, so we couldn't sell them on Amazon. So I listed them on eBay and the other site and one sold on the other site today for about £2.50. So we've had them so long. They can have both. My Hero Academia poster framed anime black picture cost £1.44 in a job lot of art that we got and that sold in less than a month for £14.49 plus post. This wasn't the sort of art I was going for, it was just in with the lot so I'm glad that's gone. Then we've got this and I'm sorry about the pronunciation, a Ch Pilevoit Sipari Grand Prix Trio times four. So a cup, a saucer, a side plate, four of each. That cost £4.84. We had high hopes for this, thought it would go for a lot more, but it in, ended up going for £12. That was from auction. And that took seven months to sell. This one, um, the customer bought it and they asked to delay postage. I cancelled the order. They messaged back and, and I sent a message saying, you know, it's cancelled, please reorder when you're ready. And they messaged back saying, oh, you could have messaged me first. It wasn't an instruction, it was a request. And I said, oh. I'm really sorry that I misinterpreted your instruction, which said, please delay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so anyway, I asked them to reorder and they did. Excellent. 
And then we've got this Foxy and Ivy mug, best person ever. Uh, that cost 28p and sold within a couple of weeks for 6 99 plus paste. We've got this hideous bowl going out. It's a Billy kitchenware hammered glass bowl and a wooden frame. Now, the bowl itself is actually quite nice. The frame is just hideous. Um, and we were only talking the other day about getting rid of the frame and just selling the bowl as it is. But when we have these conversations, things sell. This took eight, nine months to sell. It cost £1.70 from auction and sold for £14. Yeah, it's a real shame, isn't it? Yeah. It's gone cheap, but there we go. Um, then we have a vintage Chinese laughing Buddha statue. And this cost 61p from auction, sold within two months for £15. And then this piece of art, it's a vintage original oil on board, as in on painted on board, not like on board of train. Um, from And it's a view of Breen Down from Western Beach, uh, which is Western Supermare. And it's signed W Harrington. And that cost... Uh, haven't exactly oh, worked yeah. it out. So is that the seventy pound divided by seventeen? No, because this was just in with some other little bits and bobs. Oh, okay. So it's so less than a pound. It's about seventy p, don't we? Yeah. I'm not sure yet. And it sold for eighteen pounds within forty eight hours. All right, so I want to show you something that I've been doing with coupons and markdown sales. So just a quick introduction to sales and coupons in case you don't know. Coupons have been around for less time. Sale and markdown events have been around for a while. What it does is it allows you to put your goods uh, on a markdown sale, like 20% off, 30% off, whatever you like. Um, but the thing with sales is you cannot run a sale on an item that has not been set at the same price for a two week period. So let's say you list something seven days later, you won't be able to put that item on sale. It needs to be listed at that price for 14 days before you can put it on a sale. And for existing items, if you've completed any price changes on any items within the last two weeks, you won't be able to put those items on sale. But what that means for a lot of people is, um, particularly when sales are slow and you're looking for things to do to push your sales, you might want to run a sale, but you can't because maybe you've done some price changes on items or their new listings. And the reason that you can't do that just basically relates to the law. So for a long time, certainly since I can remember and I've been in retail, for many many years there are strict policies about when you can and can't run a sale and that's not just online that's that's everywhere what companies like eBay have done and Amazon have also done it is allow you to add coupons and I bet they wish they thought of it before because a coupon is just like a discount it's just like an instant discount you apply a coupon code but with eBay and Amazon you haven't been able to always just add a coupon to existing listings so this kind of navigates around that law where an item has to be set at a certain price. So it's a really good way of getting around it. But the problem is, of course, is that if you want to run a sale, you might be able to only run a sale on like 10% of your items if you've completed price changes or if a new listings. So then you might think, okay, I just need to put coupons on. And coupons are fine, but probably what's undecided for most people is what's best. Are coupons best? You know, do customers respond uh, to coupons more? Are coupons more visible in the search? Does it give your listings a bump? Or is it sale that does that? Is it a sale and markdown that gives you an extra bump? Because, you know, you can search for items that are on sale and on that subject these are sales that we've run so this one here was run between the 15th of July and the 29th of July and this was a sale uh, it was on a lot of items although not all of those would have been eligible that produced sales of 434 pounds so that's 434 pounds worth of sales on items that were on sale but then this one here this was a coupon that we ran for again sort of for two weeks uh, this only produced £200 worth of sales. Yes, the timings, you know, we could say that this one fell into payday, but it was obviously less. You know, this one led up to payday. You know, less people are on holiday maybe between these dates and not these dates. So lots of factors, you know, I'm just going from the data that I've got in front of me here. Then we ran another sale here and that sale only produced £221 of sales. Uh, whereas for a fortnight a couple of weeks before that, it was 400 uh, and then we did another coupon here for two weeks and that produced nearly £500 worth of sales whereas the previous coupon only produced £200 worth of sales. So, you know, the jury's kind of out, I, I suppose, on what's best. And the thing about coupons is unless you haven't run a sale before or unless you don't really do price changes, 
coupons will always have a higher percentage of your inventory running in them purely because you can put a coupon on anything so for me I very much wanted to run a sale but knew I couldn't do it on many many items because we'd done price changes etc so I thought okay well I want to run a coupon alongside that but what I don't want to do is offer a sale and a coupon because if you do that on one item let's say you have 20% off on your sale and 20% off on your coupon you will give away essentially two lots of 20% so if something's a hundred pounds and you're giving away 20% that's going to mark down the item to 80 pounds on the sale event and then on the coupon it'll be offering another 20% of that so that's another 16 pounds off so your hundred pound item suddenly becomes available for 64 pounds when actually you you wanted to offer it for 80 pounds so I was trying to find ways around this and I found a pretty good thing I'm just going to explain that now we don't make videos with lots of screen sharing, as you know. I don't particularly enjoy videos with lots of screen sharing of um, of this and that on eBay. So I'm going to really try and trim this down just to keep it as short and sweet and to the point. And you can obviously watch it back as many times as you like if this is something that you want to try. Now I would say one thing, this is a manual process to set it up and due to the nature of what I'm doing, um, it is also something that I have to check daily because it is possible for items to automatically fall into sale and coupon. So from the marketing tab I can go into summary and I'm going to create a promotion and first of all I'm going to create the sale event. Now I'm going to do 33% off so I want to create the sale event and I'm going to put as many items into that sale event as I can. So I'm just choosing 33% off and I'm just doing this one here. Uh, all categories, all prices. Now days on site I don't need to worry about. Um, it's going to only do anything older than 14 days. So now I'm going to select all of the items. So this is the whole inventory I'm selecting. Uh, there isn't a quicker way to do it other than just tick the boxes. Uh, I'm on 200 per page so I've got to go through five pages of it and just select all of the items. Okay so I've selected all of the items that says 840 now as I've said already not all of these 840 are going to be eligible in fact a vast number of them aren't because we've just finished the sale so there's going to be some that weren't in the sale because I hadn't added them in over the last few days. Sale event name in terms of date, today's the 25th, they have to run for two weeks so I'm going to sort of start it straight away and it's going to end in two weeks time and I've just added this nice little 33% off thumbnail so that's it, so I'm going to launch that okay so that's all created and that is active and if ever I want to go in and have a look I can and I can add more items here when I need to if more become eligible and yeah here's an example of of one of the new ones now what I need to do is create the coupon but I don't want to create the coupon for products that are in the sale the way to do this is to go to your active inventory and select listings with price markdown so these are the new items in my new sale you can just have a look at those here so it's all these 110 I can click on one and you can see it's in the sale so what I'm going to do I'm just going to open an Excel spreadsheet now you don't need any advanced Excel skills to do this at all and I'm just going to basically copy this whole page I'm on 200 per page I've got 110 listings with price markdown so essentially I'm grabbing everything here so I'm just holding control A uh, to select all and then control C to copy and then I'm going to paste this in uh, and I just want to do a, a paste special on this because I don't want all the formatting so here's all the item numbers these are really what I'm interested in so I'm just going to delete all these other rows and then I'm just sticking a filter on and I'm just filtering the item number column it's all I want and then I've just got to format this and here's all my item numbers so this is 110 item numbers that are in the sale next I just want to download my whole inventory let's go to reports downloads download report listings all active listings 
download. Okay, so I've downloaded the whole inventory file and I've formatted the item numbers. Now what I don't want to do is put on really recent stuff. So uh, I can you know, filter by the start date. I'm not going to do anything that's uh, less than two weeks old. So I've just filtered the start date and anything after August the 11th, 2024, I'm not going to include. Yeah, that's all those deleted out. So I'm just gonna copy the item numbers. So this is all of our item numbers for our whole inventory for items listed earlier than August the 11th. Back to the spreadsheet of the items that I've already put on sale. I'm going to paste those item numbers in there and then I'm going to look for duplicates, highlight those duplicates. Okay, so all these item numbers that aren't highlighted red are going to go on the coupon. I'm going to create my coupon, select a coupon code select my discount maximum savings I think the maximum you can put is 3000 so I'll just put that specific items and this is where I'm going to paste in all those item numbers there they are I can look at them and it will show me all those item numbers in there add in my little 33% off thumbnail I'm going to start it straight away. I'm going to end it same date and time as the sale event. So 8th September 6 p.m. And then I'm going to launch the coupon. Uh, while I'm here, I'm going to send that to all followers. And I'm also going to send it to all previous buyers more than 31 days ago. And all previous buyers less than 31 days ago. So those coupons are sent. So there we go, we've got the sale event, 33% off. There is 110 items in there. And we've also got our 33% off coupon. It doesn't show you here how many items are in it, but you can just click through there and that will show you. So 656 in there. Now, what is really important, there's a couple of things to note when you're doing this. The first thing is, is that as items that couldn't go in the sale event become eligible because they haven't had a price change in 14 days or rolls into the 15th day I guess then we've got to look out for those and it's really easy to do and I do it every morning and I'm not too fussed if I miss it because it doesn't happen you know every day so if I'm having a day off I don't sweat it too much also our cost prices are so low that it wouldn't be too much of a disaster. So all I can all I need to do if I want to identify if anything is in both the sale and showing as a coupon is I look in my inventory at products with a price markdown, there's 110 of them. Make sure that I'm on 200 per page, so that's showing everything on the one page. And then I'm just going to hit control and F and search for coupon and you can see there's none. What it would do is it would show here sale event active, coupon active and the control F find will find that. And to remove those all you do is go into your coupon, click active, go to your choose items, here's all your item numbers. So let's say I'd search for coupon and it threw up this top one here. And you'll see on the right hand side it'll it'll highlight them on the right hand side uh, within the slider where they are if you use Control f you'll know that anyway uh, but yeah just copy the item number if it does show that it's in a coupon search for it in here with Control f it will for example highlight it if it was there you just delete it out and include items and then save and it just updates it make sure you haven't got two commas in there like i have the other thing is with the sale event it doesn't always put items in as they become eligible. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I haven't quite worked that out. If you know anything about that, um, I'd love to learn more if you could pop a comment in. Um, but yeah, so you would just go into active, you would just add items, you would go through and tick everything again. You can see these are skipped, uh, but you just tick everything again. So go all the way down 
uh, do all your pages, tick them all and save it. And then any more that were eligible will fall into that sale. And then you can just go to your active inventory, go to your with price markdown filter, and then do your control F for coupon. And that again, that will highlight any new ones that have come in. And then the only other thing really I suppose to know is that when I decided which item numbers were going on the coupon I said I don't want anything less than two weeks old so I don't want new listings being offered 33% off tomorrow I might decide to add in what did I do the 11th of August so I might add in stuff from the 12th and then the next day I might add in stuff from the 13th on the coupon and each time I would come in and check um, whether there's any duplicates you know whether things are in price markdown and coupon that process might seem long-winded I have not found a better way to do it ultimately we want to be offering a discount or a sale of coupon on as much as we can with the exception of new items as I've already shown you um, and this is the best way I've found to do it It has produced you know decent sales um, it does seem to have a bit of an effect when you first do it as well because you put in a large number of items on sale or on a coupon be really really keen to know your comments I hope that was useful for you if it was please give this video a thumbs up if you're not subscribed to the channel please subscribe and I will see you in the next one bye for now mm -hmm.